Here's our next example of how to find the volume of an area that's been bounded by some equations and rotated about an axis. So here we have the equation y equals minus 3x plus 6 right here. And we're also bounded by the y-axis and the x-axis, so that gives us this little triangle right here. And then we rotate that about the y-axis, that gives us a nice cone. And we're going to try to find the volume of this cone using this particular method. All right, the best way to do that is to slice it, and a good slice probably would be to slice it like this. We get a small little disc, all right? And so that disc will give us a small little volume dv, and uh, we can then draw the disc right here. It's always a good idea to draw your small little volume dv, and then determine what that volume is equal to. And in this case, we can say that the, that the disc has a radius r, and a thickness would be a thickness dy, so therefore your d volume is equal to uh, pi r squared dy. Pi r squared, of course, is the area of the disk. dy is the thickness of the disk that gives you the small volume dv. All right, so what is the volume for r? r is, of course, the distance from the, x, from the y axis down to the edge right here. So that would be r. In this case, r has to be equal to x. So therefore, we can write that this is equal to pi times x squared dy. We still have one more problem. We have an x squared, and when the dy, we cannot integrate x's and y's together like that. So now we have to express x in terms of y. Here's our equation. So when we take this equation right here, we can say that uh, y equals minus 3x plus 6. We put the 3x over here. That becomes a positive 3x is equal to 6 minus y. And therefore, x is equal to 6 minus y divided by 3 or x is equal to 2 minus 1 third y. So instead of writing x squared, I can write 2 minus 1 third y and place it in there. So therefore, my dv now becomes pi times the quantity 2 minus y over 3 quantity squared dy. And I'll go ahead and multiply everything out. We have a binomial there. We'll square the binomial. And so we now say that dv is equal to pi times uh, that would be 4, twice the product of those two, that would be minus 2 thirds y, and that would be minus 4 thirds y. And squaring the last term, that would be plus y squared over 9 times dy. And so now I have my volume, my disk, that dv, expressed in terms of y only, and I'm able to integrate that. So therefore, I can say that the volume is equal to the integral of all the dv. So what we're going to do is slice this up in an infinite number of slices, add them all up, which of course is the definition of uh, integration. And so that means that this is equal to, we take the pi outside integral sign, pi times the integral of 4 minus 4 thirds y plus y squared over 9. The whole thing multiplied times dy. And now I need my limits of integration. I'm going to integrate all the way from the bottom to the top of the cone, all the way from 0 to 6. So our limits are y equals 0 to y equals 6. Now I'll go ahead and do that integral. That's a fairly easy integral to do. So volume is equal to pi times 4y minus 4 thirds y squared over 2. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus y cubed over 3 times 9. And so the integrals are, the, the limits are from 0 to 6. Okay, I think I want to simplify that just a little bit more. So this 2 comes out with that 4. And so let's write this as pi times 4y minus 2 thirds y squared and plus y cubed over 27 from 0 to 6. All right, I always like to have it as clean as possible so you don't make mistakes. When we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing but zero, so we can ignore the lower limit. We only need to worry about the upper limit. So v is equal to pi times the upper limit. So that would be 4 times 6, which is 24, minus 2 thirds times 6 squared, which is 36, and plus 6 cubed, that's 6 times 6 is 36, times 6 is 216, divided by 27. All right, simplifying that, 3 goes into 36 12 times, and 27 goes into 216 8 times, that's 160, that's 56, yep, exactly 8 times. So this is equal to pi times 24 minus 24, 
and plus 8. Of course, 24 minus 24 cancels out. And finally, we get the result of 8 pi as being the volume. All right, now in this case, we can actually check to see if we did this correctly. Here's a cone, and we should know from geometry that the volume of a cone is equal to one-third the area of the base times the height. All right, so let's do that. So that would be equal to one-third. The base is, of course, right here. We have a disk the size uh, with the radius 2, so it would be pi times 2 squared, that area of the base, and the height is 6. And so this is equal to 4 times 6, which is 24, divided by 3 times pi, which is 8 pi. And sure enough, we get the same answers we did over there. So looks like we did everything correctly. And that's how we do that using calculus.